Hello everybody, I'm gonna make a quick video here, hopefully, on uh, on Scottish Dirks. I've, I've recently been crafting a um, basically uh, historically inspired 17th, no, 18th century Scottish Dirk. The grip has got four fingers instead of the historical three, which is more common. Now, it's not because people didn't have four fingers, it's because when you're holding the Dirk, reverse grip, your pinky goes over the hunch, okay? That's basically how it was done. This section up here would, is actually where the pommel would go. Like for example, on this simple one I'm doing, that's completely, like that's how it's done. You know, that, that, that's it. You know, um, or this guy here, which looks a little more regimental. Okay, I'm gonna do something else with the haunches. That whole section is gonna get narrowed down. Um, both of those are gonna go on the um, windless steel crafts uh, dirk blades, whereas some of the more 17th century, or sorry, uh, 1700s dirk handles I'm making, uh, especially the ones like these, these ones both have the four fingers on them, and I'm going to make a pommel, I'm going to attach to this pommel. Some actually had detachable pommels, by the way, and that's why these two are kind of this way, because I didn't have a, a big enough solid piece to make it complete at the time. Um, all these start with a block of wood. Um, this guy is um, sapling walnut from my stepmom's house. I drew some lines on it that, are, that still are going to get carved out, but I'd have a lot of triquetras on this, small ones and, and big ones. This one, it's it's like some big with some, a couple small triquetras up here, and then you know a couple knots that go all the way around. There's going to be a wreath that goes around the pommel here as well and uh, there'll be a brass uh, pommel cap when it's finished with a brass nut. I'm actually going to thread this pommel. That's the plan, because historically they, they tended to do that at that time. I'm also gonna have a brass uh, ferrule, if you will, that's also gonna go down the side and then have a couple like brass uh, nails that help mount it in place. The uh, sheath, as I'm, as, I'm, uh, as I'm planning it, is gonna be maple um, with some thin leather covering over it and I'm going to have like a knife that goes in here and then, a, and then a fork that goes down below. Well, that was more typical of like, say, Victorian era dirks, um, like the regimental, like the regimental dirk that you tend to see um, from the, the red coat regiments, you know, basically like, like the uh, Black Watch, for example, the Black Watch, like, you know, post Culloden. Um, what you'll see on those ones, uh, sorry, I'm trying to thought here. Um, the designs are way different uh, uh, from that era. You, like, for example, you have all the uh, the brass nails that are going in, into the, you know, you have, you have the checker marks with all the little nails in it. Um, but one thing that's consistent with apparently an earlier um, knife that uh, I guess King Charles I of, of, of the UK um, did in fact have a, a some kind of a dagger that had a knife and uh, and fork in the sheath, according to James, James Drummond's Ancient Scottish Weapons. Anyway, I'd have to look at his source, but supposedly that was the case. And that and, and the blade of his day would have been more of a Balak dagger, not so much the Dirk the, the Dirk proper. Okay, that's kind of the difference. So that's where um, yeah, you're gonna have to kind of uh, you know decide what kind of blade you want to make. If you want to make dirks, then, you know, do you want one that has the knife and fork set up? Now, there's blades that very clearly look like they're pre culloden that have that same feature, but there's also many that do not. So, but I realized in the course of studying dirks, both from like museum photographs on, on, online, as well as James Drummond's Scottish, uh, Ancient Scottish Weapons, and, um, and of course, the group, it's, I think it's a Scottish Swords, Dirks, and Targes on Facebook. Um, it's, yeah, go, go, go on Facebook and add yourself to that group. Um, it's pretty cool. A lot of stuff there. A lot of other craftsmen. I've, I've, I'm indebted to them for, the, for inspiration, but, but especially like Vince Evans and um, for his phenom phenomenal work and also um, Hoffman of Hoffman Productions. He's made some pretty amazing Dirks. And uh, I'm telling you, um, good stuff. So, 
Um, where was I getting at? Well, in, in any case, there's a lot of great material out there to study and gain inspiration from. And, um, man, I'm getting a little bit of sun going right there. All right. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a weird location here in the backyard. But, um, yeah, I've, I've gotten a lot of inspiration, a lot of uh, knowledge from them. And, um, you know, if, if you're going to you're gonna start out with a block like this, and then you're gonna, take, you're gonna take a pencil, draw the designs, kind of like you have some designs here. So, you know, you got a little bit of haunches drawn onto it. And then you're gonna take your box cutter and you're gonna carve into it carefully. Be careful, because I cut myself this morning, doing all the, doing, cutting all these little lines. Now, let me see if I can put this in a better spot here, because I just don't want to deal with. There we go. So, so yeah, I'm gonna have that um, maple scabbard and, you know, again, add add some uh, add some blade, you know, a blade and fork setup, and then um, th I'll make another one of these guys. I like this type of octagonal design. It's not just square, but actually has a little like like the corners are actually filed down. Um, except I'm going to be using some of the same oak as I used here, which is for my yard. So that's the plan. And there's going to be brass on the end of this. It's going to have a wreath. This, there's going to be a wreath here. It's going to be nice. Um, this is going to be more fixed on, especially since there's going to be a, a brass nut to hold it in place. And uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. So um, if you guys have any questions about how to do this, um, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, this is some really fun stuff. I'm really, really loving this a lot. So um, especially after cutting these lines last night and this morning, I, I did, I did, I, I finished all these little lines and, and these wreaths last night and this morning, I did the triquetras on both sides. And then I finally decided to carve uh, these triquetras. Now this one here, there's, there's a little knot in the wood because this is from a branch, not from a trunk. And that's, and that will happen from time to time. Uh, on the back side, you also got a knot there and like a knot right here. And um, it's unavoidable when using, sometimes when using a, a, a wood from a, tr from a branch that, instead of a trunk. So use wood from a trunk if you can, um, especially if you got bigger saws and you can just, you know, chop stuff down. Uh, I use the chop saw or miter saw to, to cut these blocks into place. So a little, little bit different. Um, you, you do what you can with the tools you have. I, if I had a table saw, I think it'd be different, but, but even with a table saw, you, you still have to, you know, have a big enough blade. So it doesn't always happen quite so easily. Uh, I've got a good supply of walnut and oak and uh, some plum. And I do have some handles I'm working on from, uh, made out of plum that have a rough shape to them so far. But um, I've also got one out of elm. This one's gonna get cut down to the three to the three fingers, I think. Um, this one I can't. This one's gonna stay a, a, as it is, four fingers. And uh, but of course you got the three finger ones here, and and right here. So we'll be good to go there. So um, yeah. Anyways, uh, let me know what you think, and uh, I will talk to you guys uh, later. Have a great day. And uh, and if you're carving, if you like to carve, then uh, keep carving.